What up guys, Cole here, and this video is gonna be all about hiring on sales managers. So I know a lot of you guys, you're founders, you're entrepreneurs, probably when you started your business, you were doing all the day-to-day -day sales yourself, which, you know, it's a profitable activity, but you know you can't scale that. So eventually you hire on sales reps, you build a sales team to where you can remove yourself from the day-to-day -day selling. Well, a lot of people, when they make that transition, yes, it is great, but they realize now they've become not just a full-time sales rep, now they're a full-time sales manager. This video is gonna teach you the four steps that I've used and I teach my clients to remove yourself from the sales management process of your company altogether. So the sales division is its own division that runs autonomously on its own that can scale without you so that you can do the things a CEO does like create content, work on the product, recruit, train, lead your teams, all of the things that are gonna get you to a high seven figure, even eight figure level. What we're gonna do is splice over to a different video, some slides to go over the four steps to remove yourself from sales management right now. Guys, so a quick note before we hop into this training, this training is actually from one of our high-end paid masterminds called the Sales Team Accelerator, where we essentially help entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, agencies, done for you online services and more, be able to build their sales teams and ultimately scale to seven, multi-seven, even eight figures. So just so you know, as you get into this, there might be some language where I'm saying you guys or when you're going through the process. So this wasn't recorded strictly for YouTube. It was actually just taken straight out of one of our high-end paid masterminds. So just for the sake of context, wanted to let you, know, let you guys know that before we get into the training, but enjoy and let's get into it. So this is going to be an overview on sales management, sales leadership. What we're gonna cover is the importance of managing and leading your team, all the responsibilities required. We're gonna break these down into three different categories, which is gonna help us progressively hire out these responsibilities. And then we're also gonna talk about the path, the proper path of removing yourself from sales management. Because most people, they, they wanna have the benefits of a sales team, but they don't want to do the work. They don't wanna do any of the sales management, the sales leadership stuff that I'm gonna talk about in this video. And what they do is they prematurely remove themselves from sales management and it collapses the performance of the team. Or, or they just never get their team working in the first place. So we're gonna talk about not just the importance of properly doing this, but also how to progressively have the right sequence of removing yourself from sales management so you can get back more of your time and ultimately um, just work with your executives that you have. So um, first let's talk about the importance of sales leadership. So the sales team will never exceed the performance in which it's led. So I've coached probably 100 to 150, seven multiple seven, eight figure, multiple eight figure sales teams, like a lot of these guys, some of the biggest names in the space. And what I've noticed is the best ones, the 20% that take up 80% of the market share, like the best, best sales organizations out there, they're always without exception, no doubt, extremely well coached, extremely well managed, extremely well led. And many times, all of those things are done by the owner, even at an eight figure level, okay? I still do a lot of the management of my team. I'm kind of, I'll show you how I've leveraged my time out of it to where I only spend about 30 minutes a day. But um, many times, even at high levels, this is done by the owner, okay? And then even if it's done by a manager, what preceded that was that the owner was doing it, learn the skill set of sales leadership, sales management, and really coaching and training the team effectively, and then transferred that skill set over to their best closer internally, and then that person took over, okay? Because they had a great role model to um, model and take over the position. So even if the sales manager, even if it's like, let's say an eight-figure team where they're doing two million a month and they have an excellent sales manager, it's very, very well led. Um, many times the owner was doing it the right way first and then transferred that to the manager. Now, um, a big reason why the sales team will never exceed the performance of which is led is because sales teams run off inspiration and team spirit, right? Like think about a really great sports team. Um, they have to have good team spirit in most senses. Like a, a locker room that they're down on themselves, they're not communicating well, they don't like each other, they can't get joking around with each other, there's no cohesion as a team, they're not gonna perform as well as they could if there was a strong relationship um, interpersonally between the sales team. And then moreover than that, they have to be inspired, right? They have to love what you're doing and have conviction in what you're selling. And a salesperson is the only person in your company, in most cases, that can't perform if not inspired, right? I'll repeat that. A salesperson is the only person in your company that can't perform if uninspired, right? So for example, your accountant can be anxious, depressed, hate you, hate, hate the job, literally just be the most miserable person ever, but they can execute the books perfectly. 
However, the salesperson can't, right? If the salesperson hates their job, doesn't believe in the product, doesn't believe in what you're doing, they're not inspired, they'll sell nothing, or at best, they'll take orders. So they have to be inspired, right? And that's part of the reason why leadership is so important in sales, okay? And then all the things I'm saying here too, like not only have I really just, you know, I've, I've worked with such a large portion of all of the top sales teams out there right now in the high ticket industry. Not only that, and I've kind of looked at that as a data set and pulled out the patterns and discerned what's working in the best teams versus what is not working in the people that are struggling and leadership is bar none, a big reason why people struggle. And then the other reason it's a big reason why people succeed. So not only have I seen this just statistically with all of my clients and working with a, such a large market share of this industry, but at the same time, I've built my own eight figure sales team, soon to be multiple eight figure sales team. And I can tell you this is a hundred percent true in my own experience. So the bottom line is that you have to face the reality that Great management and leadership with your sales team is required to have a great team, okay? Trying to have the benefits of a sales team without doing the necessary work required to get it is a recipe for disaster. So I'll tell you right now, I have worked with several people who I'm not going to name any names, but you probably know who I was talking about, um, who are maybe successful in the late, uh, the late, like, um, you know, 2007 to 2010, or uh, maybe even up upwards of 2012, 2013, in a time where auto webinars were really big, um, launches were really big, and not that those things don't work anymore by any means, but they, they weren't used to, they didn't have really any sales organization, sales part of their business, okay? And then now, you know, things are changing, ad costs are rising, and they're really looking at high ticket, and they're seeing, okay, like the cash flows, and it's just easier to make ads work. They see all the benefits, so they reach out to me, and they want to build a sales team, but then they just don't want to do any of the work and the leadership required to run a sales team successfully. And guess what they do? They never succeed. No matter how big of a brand they have, no matter how, how you know, awesome their product is, whatever, they're just not willing to do the work that's required. So the bottom line is, you have to face this reality or it's not going to work, right? You have to have great leadership of your team. So how do you do it? How do you lead your team? Well, we lead through inputs, okay? We lead through inputs. Now think of inputs like feedback, right? So think about a feedback loop. We want to keep as strong and as rapid of a feedback loop as we possibly can. Now, how do we do that? Well, there's two types of feedback. There's quantitative and there's qualitative. So quantitative is like the numbers, your tracking dashboard, looking at the data you're going to get from your CRM. We're going to go over how to set up all of that in a future training. Um, and it's making data-driven decisions, which sounds really good. Like, you know, if, if you come from the media buying world, it's all about looking at the numbers, not getting emotions wrapped into it and making data-driven decisions. Very, very important. The problem with sales and in high tickets specifically is that to get statistical, because of regression to the mean, which is the natural variance in data anytime you're working with humans, to get a statistically significant amount of data that you can make a data-driven decision off of, you need like 50, if not 100 calls. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to give my guy 100 calls to find out that he's not converting statistically, right? So quantitative is, is, is great and like I track, the, the way I'll teach you how to track is bar none, probably the best way you're ever going to learn. Um, most people never track their sales data correctly, but it's not enough. We also want to have qualitative inputs, and that's really effective sales management. So that's how they're showing up on your morning meetings and the feedback you're getting there, how you're, um, they're doing their end-of-day reports and the feedback you're getting there, the one-on-one -on -one calls, the call reviews that you're going to have with them. There's two types of call reviews. There's kind of a temp check call review where they don't even know you're listening to the call. You're just kind of listening in to temp check. And then there's also an actual live sit down review where you sit down with the rep and review it with them. Also how they communicate with you over Slack, right? So these are what allow you to get a temperature check and there's a much more rapid feedback loop here, but it's not going to be as accurate, right? Like they might be, be kind of off and still hit their numbers. Whereas the quantitative, you can't, the numbers don't lie. It's a hundred percent accurate, but the feedback loop is very slow. So a combination of these is essential to have the proper inputs to lead our team effectively, okay? Now, all of this stuff I'm gonna highlight on my screen right here, leading through inputs, quantitative, qualitative, I mean, that's basically the, uh, that's basically what we're gonna go over in this week of training, okay? But I'm just kind of teaching you the philosophy behind this at a high level. So if this is not making sense now, it will 
as we get through this. So let's look at the breakdown of sales management responsibilities. Basically, when you look at sales management, there's three main categories of responsibilities. There's the coaching and the training that you're gonna have to do with the reps. There's the admin and the operations work. And then there's the leadership, okay? And it's important to categorize these because what we're gonna talk about soon is the path to removing ourselves from sales management. And basically, we're going to delegate these responsibilities as categories, okay? But we have to understand the different categories first. The first is coaching and training. So what does coaching and training consist of? It consists of running the morning meetings, doing projections with the reps, the training, the call reviews, Q&A announcements, okay? It also consists of the one-on-one calls. Now with one-on-one calls, I typically recommend, and we'll, we'll get into a specific regiment with this later, and how to conduct the one-on-one calls. So we'll get into more detail. I'm just giving you the high level. But with one-on-one calls, two to three for the first two to three weeks, so two to three a week for the first two to three weeks as they're onboarding, then usually weekly, okay? And especially weekly, usually if the sales leader manager is doing this, and then bi-weekly if it's the entrepreneur. And then I always tell our sales managers and sales leads, like if you're doing a weekly call with a rep and the weekly call kind of starts to become like a little bit like, you just don't really have much to talk about, then you can move to bi-weekly. Now I never do, I think bi-weekly, you never want to do um, longer time frames than that. You could certainly do monthly, but I think if, you, especially if you have your sales lead and manager doing this, bi-weekly minimum. Then there's the end of day report. So um, your coaching and training aspect of this is you're going to be reading, commenting, coaching on all of them, calling the reps, like a five, 10 minute call at the end of the day, address any items. We're, we're going to talk about end of day reports, what they are, how to use them, et cetera, in a future training. There's also the call reviews, which I already covered. There's the temp check and the live reviews with the reps. Okay. So we'll get into the specific coaching and training regiment and how to break this down into SOP later. But I just want you to understand now, this is one of the three broad categories of sales management responsibilities. The second one is the admin and ops. Okay. So this is like the sales coordination activities. So grading, approving, or moving applications, maintaining proper attribution of all sales opportunities and closed deals, communicating to marketing and setters what the availability is on the calendar versus KPI, making sure closers and setters are doing their admin and their end of day checklist. Uh, maintaining accuracy of the tracking dashboard and analyzing and or working with marketing to integrate our the sales reporting that comes along with the pay traffic reporting. So you have a more holistic reporting for the whole entire acquisition part of your business. Okay, so I rolled through that quickly. Um, again, we're going to have a training that covers all of these responsibilities. And I'm going to show you the exact SOPs we use internally for this. Okay. Then finally, the third category is a leadership. And the leadership is really just going to happen on the meetings, the morning meetings with projections and communicating mission, vision, and values to the reps. Okay. So three categories, leadership, admin and ops, and coaching and training. Now, when we talk about the path to removing yourself from sales management, this is where breaking these down into categories is going to become important. Okay. Because I know, you know, one of the things I get all the time is, People want to remove themselves out of sales management as soon as possible, right? They want the benefits of the sales team, but it's like they don't want to do the work. And eventually it does make sense for you to have an executive who's doing this for you, okay? So um, while I understand that is like, I know you want to get out of sales management, also realize that a degree of sales management you know, not getting all in the nitty gritty and doing all this admin and all these car reviews, but a degree of it, especially the leadership aspect, is probably one of, if not the most highest leverage things you can do in your entire company. Like remember, the two highest leverage tasks you can do once you're off the phones is filling your sales team's calendar and training them to be savages. So obviously I'm not discounting like work on product, work on your team, uh, you know, lead your team effectively, all of those things. But in terms of activities that you're going to be doing as a CEO that are directly to tied to profit, like they're, they're your profit levers, it's filling your sales team's calendar, training them to be savages. Like you might remember um, before you had a sales team, your two things were generating calls, doing calls, right? Now it's filling the sales team's calendar, training them to be savages. Again, doesn't mean you shouldn't work on product. Like product is very, very key. That's what you're going to spend a lot of time on. But these are the two things directly tied to profit in most cases. Okay. So for example, like we're soon to do about 2 million a month. Uh, we're, we're well over 1 million a month. And I still run all the daily sales meetings. But that's all I do. Okay. Now, um, I've created a progression. It's a multiple phase progression in which you can get yourself out of 90% of the sales management activities 
without a decrease in performance, okay? So we're gonna roll through this progression and understanding these categories that I went over up here is gonna be key to understanding how we progress. So phase one is you're gonna do everything, okay? So you hire your first rep, basically you should just do everything. You should do the leadership, the coaching and training, and the admin. Now, if you have a really good operations assistant or operations manager, a lot of this admin stuff that we'll go over later, you could probably just outsource, not outsource, but delegate that to them right from the beginning. But definitely in the beginning, phase one, leadership and coaching and training, you are going to do, and you're gonna do all of it, okay? So what's key here is that in phase one, you're hiring your first sales rep, sales team's new to you, you're leading the team, you're getting a feel for that, you're building that skill set, and you're coaching and training the team. And it's important that you build that skill set of not just leading, but also coaching and training the team, because the faster you can master that skill set, the faster you could teach it to the right person to transfer that skill set to them to remove yourself from that aspect. Okay? And what's also key here is that it's really useful to be a good sales, a good enough sales trainer and sales coach for your own team and your own offer, because that way, if your team's falling in the ruts, you're going to be able to listen to the calls and diagnose, is it the marketing? Is it the quality of the leads? Is it a breakdown in the sales process? And you have proper attribution to what your results are or the lack thereof. Okay. So uh, when I run into entrepreneurs, I mean, and, and look, you know, you're in this program, we have great sales trainers. We can help you with this if you kind of, if, if you're, if you're learning and you're not as good at it. Right. So, but an entrepreneur who's, who's great at sales, it's so much easier for them to diagnose if they're not hitting their numbers. Why? Because they can look at the calls, look at the front lines and see what it is. Okay. So that's phase one. You do everything, maybe not the admin. Now phase two is basically you're going to outsource or delegate the admin to your operations person or hire what's called a sales coordinator. Okay. So here you're going to still do the coaching and training and the leadership, but this admin stuff, you're just going to delegate to a sales coordinator. Everything stays the same. So this is very similar to phase two. You could start at phase two, or you could just quickly move here once you kind of get um, this admin stuff down, like grading and approving the apps and so on and so forth. Now, phase three is where it gets interesting, and this is what you, a lot of you guys are going to want to hear. So phase three is the sales leads plus coordinator, okay? So usually when we get to phase three, we have four to six or more setters and closers on the team. So our, our total team size, when, it, when it's setters and closers combined, is four to six people plus, Okay, total team size, setters and closers combined. In phase three, we're also um, we're gonna have a stellar setter or closer. So we have like, at this point, you should identify within your team somebody who's a breakout performer. I would say at least be at 300 grand a month, if not more. And then existing performance is already excellent. Okay, so like 25% plus closing ratios. Um, you don't want to go from phase two to phase three if your team performance is not good because it's just going to get worse, right? Like you, you got to get the system working before you pass off the system to somebody else, okay? Um, so again, like if, if it's not good, you need to find out the root cause for the underperformance. So here, what this phase is all about is we're going to take our best setter and or our best closer and turn them into a lead. So now they're going to take over all of the coaching and training responsibilities as listed above. And what we're going to do is just the leadership, right? So you see this, um, they're going to do all the one-on-ones. They can help lead the meeting, comment on the day reports, car reviews, and they can also, they're player coaches. They can also still take the calls, right? So I broke it down in the, this is why I broke it down in categories is because now your leads can do all of this stuff, which look, that's most of the stuff. Right? And then you already have your sales coordinator from phase two. So look at now, we just eliminated 90% of the work. But this is what's really the, the I mean, this is the 10% that drives the 90% of results is the leadership, right? So you're not removed from that yet. Okay, so going back down here on the page, I put here, it's important, you still do the following in phase three. Morning meetings and a day reports, right? So you do the morning meetings, you lead the meetings, you do projections, you communicate mission, vision, and values. You should show up there daily, and then also you're looking at grading on all the end of the day reports of all the reps, okay? But at this stage, you're, you're gonna take your management time down from like maybe three or four hours a day to 30 to 60 minutes a day, okay? And um, you're there to lead, communicate mission, vision, and values, infuse the energy or the meeting with energy, and still do some sales training as well, run projections, 
um, all of that stuff. It's just that your lead now, who's like a player coach, can help with a lot of the training. Okay, so this is what I currently do, and we'll probably continue this model until two, two and a half million a month. You know, at a certain point, I, I, I might step in a couple times a week, tops, but right now I still am in there daily. Okay, but that's that's the extent of my sales management is about 20 to 60 minutes a day, depending on how long the meeting goes. Okay, and also you want to frame this to where your lead here, who's like that breakout performer, you want to frame it as that this is their stepping stone to eventually be the sales manager, which they're going to want to do, right? And so they'll be able to, they'll want to put in more work here in this position as a lead to prove themselves that they could eventually be the manager and get off calls. And then I would just give them an extra like 1,500 to three grand a month tops at this point, right? Um, you don't need to overpay for your leads. Like I would just give them a little like bonus that's almost like neg negligible based on the um, revenue that you're making, right? What they're going to really like is a leadership responsibility and knowing that they're kind of in this tryout phase of taking it over. Now, phase four, so a lot of you guys, I want you to get here, okay? Like if I can get most clients, because a lot of clients are like, oh, I don't want to manage the sales team. I'm strapped on time, blah, 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 blah. You know, first of all, realize like, a lot, of you, a lot of you guys just have a, a misinterpretation of what really is um, a high priority in terms of your time and what really is a high leverage task versus a low leverage task. So don't be afraid to spend time really in phase one, phase two, but eventually once you get into four, five, 600 grand a month plus, um, certainly um, when you get into the eight figure range, a lot of you guys I'd really like to see in phase three. That's, a, that's just, that's where I'm at right now. And it's just, I have I have complete visibility on what's going on, but I'm not doing a lot of the work. It's perfect, okay? Now, phase four, and it sets you up for phase four because you have the leads who are sales, tra sales managers in training. Phase four is the full-time sales manager. So now you promote the lead to a full-time sales manager. This person's just gonna do everything, right? So leadership and coaching and training. You're still gonna have the sales coordinator and the admin do the admin work. Like I wouldn't have your, your manager be doing like, they can grade the apps maybe, but you know they don't need to be doing like button pushy administrative work, right? So they'll work with the coordinator. But in this phase, you're basically removed. I would still recommend attending the beginning of two to three meetings a week just to make announcements, communicate mission, vision, and values. I still think it's just so high leverage that I would do it, right? But you certainly don't have to attend every meeting. Um, and once you get about 12 to 15 plus high performing salespeople, setters, and closures combined, this move's usually necessary. Um, in general, I wouldn't do it before probably a million a month in B2B and uh, like 400 to 600 grand a month in B2C, right? So like if your offer is like 5K and you're at 500 grand a month, you're probably gonna have several sales reps on the team just because of the economics of your offer. You're probably looking at a sales manager around that level. Or in B2B, if your offer is 10K plus, or you know, even like 7,800, 6,800 plus, um, you know, you're probably looking at a million a month before you're even considering a full-time sales manager, in my opinion. So um, just to reiterate, this guy's like, man, most people, they just outsource this so fast, so fast. And then their manager is just incompetent and he stinks. So um, don't be afraid to hang out in phase three. Like that's the phase I really like because your visibility will be extremely high in terms of what's going on, but you're not doing a lot of the work right? And if I can get people to follow this structure here, which is what I follow now at, you know, million, million five a month, then, um, I mean, you guys are going to crush it. So, but eventually it does become necessary to go to phase four. All right. So before you hop off this video really quickly, if you want this downloadable resource, basically what we went over today, just so you can print it out and use it for your own business, make sure to comment down below this video sales manager, super simple, go down there, comment that, and we'll go ahead and reply to you with a link. So you can go ahead and download this yourself. And again, use it for yourself and uh, use it for your business. So with that being said, we'll see you guys on the next video. Talk to you soon.